Our dear Heavenly Father, we pray for a deeper experience. That as many others share in this experience around the world, please do not pass us by, is our prayer in Jesus' name. The message today is, as you hang out, you go deeper. As you hang out, you go deeper. And so the question we will be asking this evening is, are you hanging out? Because as you hang out, you go deeper. The question, therefore, is, are you hanging out? To hang out is in formal language commonly used in North America, and it is both a noun and a verb. When you say to hang out, a hangout as a noun refers to a place where you live or frequently visit. You can show me your house and say, oh, this is my hangout. This is where I stay, informally. This is where I stay. This is my hangout. Or if you frequently go to a certain place, that place is your hangout. But hangout is also a verb. It is something that we do. To hang out, while it has many meanings, the meaning we wish to use today is to spend time relaxing or enjoying oneself. To hang out. You are relaxing and enjoying yourself to hang out. Where will you be hanging out this weekend? Where will you be spending time and relaxing this weekend? Where will you be hanging out this holiday? Where will you be spending time and relaxing? And we are saying that as you hang out, you go deeper. Are you hanging out? As you spend time together, relaxing and enjoying each other's company, the relationship grows deeper and better. Any relationship, when you spend time together and enjoying each other's company, that relationship grows deeper and better. That is why we need to date, then court, then get engaged, all this before marriage. Because when you date, it is the initial stage of hanging out. Then when you feel you are comfortable with each other, you proceed to courting where you hang out a little bit much more. But you see, when you don't like each other at the date, you part company and you look for another date to hang out with. But if you like the person, you proceed to courting and hang out a little longer. And when you like each other at courting, you say, why don't we get engaged for marriage? So that during engagement, you continue hanging out together as you try to understand each other. And after that, you come to the church and we declare you husband and wife to forever hang out until death does you part. But some of you are always in a hurry to marry or get married to somebody. And so you try to con the pastor. You come to me and say, oh, I found somebody we want to get married. Then I say, how long have you known each other? They say, kind of three years. Mm, three years, I've never seen you together. No, we've been together in college. You are sitting at the back. You are seeing the person there. That is not hanging out, my friends. And so you use that to say, yeah, 
I used to see him playing football and I was sitting in the church the other side, so we were together. Then you started meeting last week. And so to confuse me, because you know deep in your heart that you should not be making a commitment in a short time, you now fool me by saying that, yeah, we've known each other for a while. And the while you didn't even know each other's name. You are seeing the person going that direction and you are going the other direction. That is not hanging out. I see many people coming to me with that kind of story. How long have you known each other? It's been a year and a half, I think. But as in really close, close, we began in January. And you know we are in January. Are we together? <laughs> we began in January. Uh, which year? Uh, yeah, uh, th this, this one. <laughs> but we are in January. So you are counting when you started seeing the person in August, you are fooling yourself. You are not fooling me. You need to hang out. And it has been estimated that two years of hanging out may be sufficient to start discussing marriage. Maybe. Not one month or two months of confusion. And that's why we are saying that if hanging out is important for our relationship, surely even our relationship with God requires that we hang out with God. And that's why we are saying as you hang out, you go deeper. You just met the person today and you're wondering, oh, what's your name? My name is Jean. Oh, G, G, G what? Jean. That's how you begin. Are we together? G, what? Jean. From where? I'm from Kigali. Jean. Oh, nice. Are we together? And so you start hanging out. Are we together, friends? You start hanging out. What about you? I'm from Lusaka. Okay, you are from Lusaka. But my home is not really, really Lusaka. It's Harare, but we just moved to Lusaka. Okay. You see, that is the first hangout. You have not gone any deep. But then you go for a first date somewhere there, and she eats an entire chicken, and you say, hey. <laughs> and now, now you are starting to understand each other. You are now going deeper. Brethren, you are now going where? You are now going where? Deeper, deeper. You are now going deeper. You are now starting to understand. Unless you hang out, you cannot go where? Deeper. Then exams come, and the friend says, yeah, yeah, these exams I'm not ready, but I have to find a way. How will you do it? Then they pull out a piece of paper with a lot of notes and say, yeah, this one I've done since primary school. This one I will score, don't worry. Then you say, hey, okay, I'm, I'm dealing with a serious case here. The more you hang out, the deeper you go. If you understand me, say Amen. And that's why we're saying that as you hang out, you go where? As you hang out, you go where? I can't hear you. As you hang out, you go where? Deeper. You cannot conclude on day one. You cannot conclude on day two. You need to hang out so that you go deeper and fully understand the person. It is as you hang out that you discover the person that, oh, this one is sickly sometimes. Oh, I called you yesterday. Oh, I was sick. You know, my ulcers were back. Oh, you now know has ulcer. Oh, by the way, my medication for asthma got finished. I will need to rush to capsabate. Oh, has asthma, has ulcer, has sleeping sickness, sleeps in church. <laughs> and you say here... I will not be a marriage partner. I'm going to be a nurse here. And you know that kind of thing. As you hang out, what happens? No, I can't hear you. As you hang out, what happens? As you hang out, what happens? You go deeper. As you hang out, you go deeper. And that's why we are asking, are you hanging out? The time you spend hanging out, you discover each other and trust grows or dwindles. I had a girlfriend here I will not mention because I know she will listen to this sermon someday, even though she's now a mother somewhere and somebody's wife. And this girlfriend of mine, <laughs> but I know she will smile. Are we together? Because she knows I'll be talking about her. This girlfriend of mine, 
finish school. And when she was here, we will meet and talk and what have you. But the moment she disappears, her phone goes off. Mm. And so, the more we related, the more I noticed that I only have this girlfriend when my eyes are on her. The moment she is out of sight, I can't reach her whichever way. Well, the relationship didn't take a very long time and it ended. Why? Because instead of our trust growing, our trust did what? Dwindled, dwindled, dwindled. Our trust went down. And I had another girlfriend. I had several. Are we together? <laughs> That's why when I married my wife, I said, I chose you. You know what that means? Out of the many that I have made, I selected you. You know? <laughs> Some of you can't say I chose you because you only had one option. Are we together? So there was nothing to choose from. But for me, I chose. So I had another girlfriend who was, who was known to be amorphous. You know what amorphous is? She never talks about anything in reality. Where are you? I was with some friends. Which friends? Just some other friends. And when you dig deeper, you discover she was with some guys. Where were you yesterday? I was, I was with some people, I was somewhere. And I discovered the more we related, the more amorphous she became. And I said, now, what's happening here? And I had to call her and say, eh, my dear sweetheart, you are so amorphous that cracking you requires training in anti-terrorism. <laughs> And so I told her, please, I need you to open up a little bit more. And she opened up a little bit more. We related for quite some time. Listen, brethren, I'm saying that as you hang out, trust with, will either do what? Grow or do what? Dwindle. The time you spend hanging out builds a foundation for how you perceive and interpret each other in future during crisis. Hanging out is very important. To hang out together is critical for any and every relationship, including our relationship with God. We need to hang out with God. It is foolish, brethren, to commit to a relationship which you haven't understood by hanging out together. And that's why we are saying today, as you hang out, you go deeper. Are you hanging out? Marriage gets better as you hang out friends. Avoid long-distance relationships that have no opportunity for hanging out. Our relationship with God is not long distance. He is ever present with us. Avoid marriage of long distance. You know, there was another girlfriend. Now I'm, I'm even afraid to say it's my girlfriend because, again, you... You may think that my appetite is large, but actually she was my other girlfriend. Are we together? <laughs> and the first time I met her here, you know, I told her, I have certain feelings for you. She said, hey, don't go very far. I have a boyfriend in America. Are we together? And I knew I'd struck gold. America and I'm here? <laughs> uh, that guy is a loser any time. Are we together? And uh, I can assure you that I have no history of failure. Are we together? <laughs> so what we are saying is that we need to avoid anything long distance. Are we together? Because where there is long distance, there is no hanging out. How are your relationships? Are you hanging out? How is your relationship with God? Are you hanging out with God? As you hang out, you go deeper. Are you hanging out? In Genesis, when Adam and Eve sinned against God, the Bible says they ate the fruit, they discovered they were naked, and Genesis chapter 3, verse 8, 9, and 10 shows something about hanging out. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 3, verse 8, 9, and 10, that Adam and Eve heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And when they heard those footsteps, they knew that God is coming for the customary hanging out with them. 
And the man and his wife hid themselves. Why did they hide? Because they knew that God was looking for them. They hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Can you imagine you want to hang out with your friend, you go to lady's dome and you call her and she hides. Those days when, when we were students, you know, we had banquet, are we together? During banquet, we had a tradition where gentlemen would go to ladies' dome, you know, carrying flowers, and then, you know, you give the lady, and then you walk together arm in arm to the banquet. Woe unto you if you have not done groundwork, are we together? Because you will carry the flower, and when you get there, she cannot be reached. Carrying flowers back without somebody is the heaviest burden you can carry in a life. <laughs> Adam and Eve knew that God was looking for them. And when they heard the footsteps of God, God was not coming for an assignment. He was not coming to beat them up. He was just coming to hang out with them. But they knew there was a problem. They were naked and they hid among the trees. Verse 9, the Bible says, But the Lord God, when he got there and discovered they were not at where they had agreed. I can imagine they must have agreed with God. Let's meet under the mango tree. And so, while they are at the mango tree, they hear God walking. They know he's coming under the mango tree where they agreed. They hid. And so God gets there. But the Lord God calls out to him and says, where are you? I mean, we had agreed to meet here. Don't we call each other? When you agree to meet with somebody after church and you stand outside the church, you look around, you don't see them, you pick the phone. And after the person picks, you say, where are you? Same thing. God says, where are you? I want to hang out with you. Verse 10. And Adam responded and said, that I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid. Because I was naked and I hid myself. I was no longer interested in hanging out with you. Listen, brothers and sisters, we were created to hang out with God. I'm saying we were created intentionally to hang out with God. God created us to be his company, just to hang out with him. We were created to hang out with God. Even in the perfect world of Eden, a deeper experience depended on hanging out with God. Eden was a perfect world, but even in that perfect world, for Adam and Eve to have a deeper experience with God, they needed to hang out with God. And that's why God came for the routine hanging out with them. In Genesis chapter 5 verse 24, the Bible says of a gentleman called Enoch that Enoch walked with God and he was not. He was no more. Because God did what? Took him away. Not dying. The concept of God taking has been misunderstood. No, not dying. Enoch was alive and made it a habit to hang out with God. Enoch was known to have dedicated time to hang out with God. The people of his time knew that Enoch loves God extraordinarily. And God decided to do what he does to everybody who hangs out with him. He took him. Maybe you don't know, brethren, that all of us who hang out with God, Jesus will come the second time to take us. Because anyone who hangs out with God, God takes him. God takes her so that they may be together forever. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's why Jesus made the promise in John 14, verse 1 to 3, that do not let your heart be done what? Be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And he says, I go to prepare a place for you. And after I prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you with me. So that where I am, there you may be also. God's ultimate aim is to hang out with you and hang out with me. God's ultimate aim. 
He wants to hang out with us. He wants to spend time with us. He doesn't want to turn it into a class. He's not saying that I will take you to heaven for further lessons on prophecy. No. He just says in heaven there is milk and honey. We will stay together. No sickness, no crying, no worry. And he says they will just be singing. Hanging out with God is a good experience. Enoch hanged out with God. And God did what he will do to everyone who hangs out with him. He took him. Brethren, I want to hang out with God so that he may take me. Being taken doesn't mean dying. It means when he comes the second time, he will save me to eternal life. Amen? In Acts chapter 4, verse 13. Acts chapter 4, verse 13. <laughs> Acts chapter 4, verse 13. The Bible says, now, look at that version on the screen. When they saw the boldness of who? Of Peter and John, and they perceived that these guys had how much education? No education. They were uneducated. They were just common, common men. And they wondered and they recognized that these people must have been hanging out with who? With Jesus. These people must have been hanging out with Jesus. Listen, when you hang out with God, it leaves you more like God and better than you were before you started hanging out with God. That's where you say amen. That when you hang out with God, it leaves you better. You may be common, but when you hang out with God, you are no longer common. What does the church say? You may be uneducated, but when you hang out with God, you can no longer be seen as uneducated. What does the church say? Listen, friends, whoever you hang out with will influence and affect your life. And you don't need to give consent except accepting to hang out. Let me tell you, you can't say I'm tough, nobody can change me. The moment you accept my company, I will influence you and you will. The moment I accept to be in your company, you will change me some way. And the moment you accept to be in my company, I will change you some way. Anyone you spend time with will change you one way or the other. And that's why Peter and John, uneducated, common guys, decided to hang out with Jesus and they came out top. And everyone looked, eh, mm, <laughs> what's happening? You know, it's like some of you, if you wear a suit or you dress in a certain way, I will have to ask you a question. You tell me what's happening. Yeah, this is not your way of life. Something must have happened. If you hang out with the crooks, you will always get a crooked deal. It is standard. You can't just say, oh, my friends are crooks, but I'm just a good person. I don't worry. Listen, whoever you hang out with will rub off some of themselves on you. If you hang out with God, divine favor will be upon you. As you hang out with whoever, your life is changing, even for adults, not just the youths. I have seen senior old men aged who have been very faithful in church until they get into politics and they get into the company of politicians and all the Christianity they had disappears. Shame on them. A full adult man starts drinking alcohol and was a church elder last year just because they are now hanging out with the politicians who are drunkards. We are not saying that every politician is bad, but we are saying that some people are even affected at old age. As you hang out, you go deeper. The question is, are you hanging out? Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, 29, and 30. Jesus says, come to me. What does Jesus say? Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you what? Rest. Jesus says, come, let's hang out. Verse 29, he says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am what? Gentle. 
and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Verse 30, he says, for my yoke is what? Is easy. And my burden is what? Is light. Jesus invites us to hang out with him. He says, come with your issues. Come with your attitude. Come with your moods. Come with your bad personality. Come with your bad habits. And Jesus says, as you hang out with me, it will just get sorted out. You should never wait to be good to come to God. You come the way you are and all the burdens you are carrying that others are fed up with will change. Some of us have been rejected continuously because of certain behavior. Listen, friends, Jesus says, come with that behavior that others have rejected and I will deal with it. Just hang out with me and it will go. Just hang out with me and it will go. Jesus says he is easier to deal with and we can learn from him since hanging out will affect us. He says he is easier to deal with. Don't deal with others who are not Jesus. They are difficult. Learn from me. Hanging out with Jesus is learning from him. What does it mean to hang out with Jesus? Learning from him. He says, come and learn from me. We need to learn from Jesus. Listening to his word. Studying his word. Praying to Jesus. Experiencing Jesus. That is hanging out with Jesus. He says, come and learn. The question is, are you learning from Jesus? When we have Sabbath school classes, an opportunity to learn about Jesus and from Jesus, do you come or you appear after the lesson discussion? Jesus says we won't be stressed hanging out with him. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. Anytime a yoke is not easy and a burden is not light, it is not from Jesus. Oh, you didn't hear that. Jesus says my yoke easy. My burden, light. Anytime it is complicated, it's not from Jesus. And that's why when disciples spend time with Jesus, when they met Gentiles, some people drew a long list and say, for a Gentile to be a Christian, number one, circumcised. Some, number two, they must not eat this meat. Number three, they must not do this. And they had a long list. And Paul the Apostle says, rubbish. Why are you making it difficult for them? And there was a big argument, big argument, and the church met together. And after the meeting, they took an action. Read the way the action reads. Acts chapter 15, verse 19. Acts chapter 15, verse 19. This is the action they took. Learning from Jesus, they said, this was the conclusion. Therefore, my judgment is that we should not trouble those of the Gentiles who are turning to God. Other versions will tell you we should not make it difficult for anyone who is coming to God. Oh, you are coming to God. Number one, we must observe you. Whether you have worn a trouser and you are a lady, we must watch that. Oh, we must watch this. We must watch the other one. You must start taking hot water very early in the morning. You must eat fruits before the main meal. You must not eat between meals. You, hey! And he says, listen, it is my judgment that let's make it easy for anyone who is coming to the Lord. Actually, that version is on the screen there. It is my judgment, therefore, that we should not make it what? Difficult for the Gentiles who are turning to God. But how many people are making life difficult for everyone? You meet them on WhatsApp group. Even the, the passage they want you to read when you ask one question makes it difficult for you to come to Jesus. Long passage, you reach the end, read more. You keep reading, you reach the end, read more. My goodness. We should not make it easy for those who want to come to who? To God. The disciples resolved to make it easy and light. Why? Because Jesus said, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. Any time it is not easy, any time it is not light, it's not from God. The disciples had truly hung out with Jesus 
and had been changed. If we hang out with Jesus, we won't make it difficult. Brothers and sisters, in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and eat with him, and he with me. Jesus is standing at the door knocking, saying, I want to hang out with you. Will you hang out with me? Because as you hang out, you go deeper. We cannot have a deeper experience without hanging out with him. We have said hanging out with Jesus is learning from him. But remember in Exodus 25 verse 8, he said, Let them build me a sanctuary that I may dwell with them. A sanctuary is a place of worship. And so God says, when they come to worship, they will be hanging out with me. Listen, to hang out includes attending worship. When you attend worship, you are hanging out with God. And now he says, I'm knocking at the door. Who wants to hang out with me? And so today I want to ask you, brethren, is there anyone who says I want to hang out with God? I want to learn from him. I want to be attending church. Even where necessary, I want to get baptized. If you are there and you say, I want to hang out with God, go deeper in my relationship with God so that it shall be well in my life. Let me see by the show of hands. Those who say, I want to hang out with God. Let's pray. Father in heaven, look at these hands. We just want to hang out with you. We want to go deeper in our relationship with you. Dear Heavenly Father, accept these hands that have been raised. There are those who need to get baptized as they register with the pastor's office today and tomorrow. Bless them and hang out with them. Bless us during these 10 days of prayer. In the name of Jesus, amen.